um, sometimes I play with music in, but then I feel like it, I'm paying more attention to the music, I'm not focusing on my match so much, and other times I feel like, um, it helps me play more patiently, you know, when I'm having a play against, like, a Sonic or something where I might be going camped, I have more fun when I'm listening to the music with it. Right. So I feel like it's kind of, in, you can't say one way or the other, like, music is always good or always bad to play with. Um, and it also depends on, like, the kind of music, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Okay, so, right now, getting into this game, really, uh... Right now, it's really, it's always neck and neck with these players at first, and then, like, it's usually whoever just breaks first gets a long spree, and then the other player will almost turn around at the end of the set. Yeah. That's how it usually goes with Zenyu and K9. Like, they're just, I've watched this so many times, uh, <laughs> this is like a record player on repeat, but in, in essence, I love, I still love it N uh, more or less the same as I, as I did when I first watched it, because it's just, that's how dynamic they're, like, their matches are, you know? Honestly, Mario's Flood is just one of the funniest moves in the game to me, like, you saw um, K9 try to monkey flip the stage and then you just used Flood there, and K9 just stuck in that funny little animation where he's just hanging there. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the funniest looking moves <laughs> in the game <laughs> yeah. in general. Like, oh, but get up smash. Yeah, and I, I was no noticing that earlier when Zenyu had him on the left side of the stage and he had flooded him and he was in that position. It was kind of just funny a looking. But yeah, no, um, great, great lead by Zenyu here, actually. Only 80%. Not really in... Did he's kill percent range without any rage? Yeah, that's actually true. And it uh, goes back to what I, I said uh, earlier between the other two players last set about how, you know, when you get a lead, when you when you get it stock, it's almost in essence like you kind of recover a little bit of life. Having no rage, and rage is so powerful in this game. So. Oh yeah, we saw um, Frostbite is a good example of what rage can do. Yeah, Frostbite. Frostbite um, rage mixed with aura, of course, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Sue, man. Sue... I'm surprised. I was always following Sue. I, I've always followed the Japanese scene for a while, so I'm so surprised that like people are just now kind of like looking at like, oh, Lucario, this Lucario. Like, I'm like, it's always been like this. Like, people, where have you been? Yeah, I mean, I don't follow the Japanese scene as closely as I would like to. Um, but it's always a great experience for me, as someone who doesn't really watch Japanese tournaments, to have these new Japanese visitors to the states that you get to see a little bit of new stuff that you're like, huh, I didn't know this character could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just really wanted to point out that dash attack from from K9 was almost. I'm almost entirely sure that was a missed input because he was off after a down tilt, so he probably meant to up smash. Yeah, him. probably. But great spacing from Zenyu there, able to read just the little crawl that Diddy was doing. Mm -hmm. Got the up smash, very reminiscent of um, Zero vs Ally. Oh Sonic yeah, actually, when we saw the same die. thing, we'll where die. the day was just kind of crawling back and forth trying to space, and you just threw the up smash out, and it was able to connect with the perfect spacing. Mm -hmm, yeah. And so, right now, I feel like that's kind of like weighing in on Kanan a little bit, aka the switch to Sheep. But, you know, we'll see really more th through his play how much it's weighing on him, rather than... I just like to say that, but, ooh. Zenyu, you know, we were talking about... I was watching MSM and WNFs last weekend. Uh, the, the matches that Kanan and Zenyu had to play there, uh, you know, like, Strides was pointing out how, like, basically the way they play each other is that there was, for a long period of time, uh, a point where one player had like a super dominant advantage over the other. Like, so, and, and his example was that K9 had for a long time a huge advantage over Zenyu because his neutral was far more developed, and then they got switched the other way around where Zenyu had practiced so much, his neutral got that much more developed than K9's, where it was like he was now, you know, after a few yeah. months, he's the one doing all the stomping. And now it's kind of leveled out. You can see these players are kind of just like, they always are kind of just trading blows, you know. So, it's really, really interesting stuff. Okay, gets the grab. And he's got stage control. I don't know how much you can do with that right now. Mario oh, Sheik with stage control is terrifying, you know. It really feels like if K9 plays it right and doesn't let send you back to the stage, he won't come back on his own. Mm -hmm. it, it's really up to um, K9 making the mistake in neutral that Zenyu's able to get back. Yeah, that, that's why. That's what I really meant to say when I said I'm not too sure what he can, what he can do with it. I'm, I'm not too sure how well he's planning to execute the things he wants to do today. Because some days K9's execution is great, and some days it's really just not. So. Uh, but nonetheless, oh, uh, he may oh, a preemptive bouncing fish. I think he tried to just go for stage with that one, but it connected. Maybe. So. Uh, one thing I want to point out is the the switch to Sheik is actually going to have a bit of an effect in that. Um, it's kind of scary that um, K9 can't really jump into Mario at this percent. You know, you see K uh, Sheik in general likes to go for these like short hops and neutral cap baits and the like randomly throw out the short hop there, the mm. short hop there, and connect it into a bouncing fish. Right, right. But against Mario, you really can't be jumping on him, you know? He's got that invincible up smash that 
gonna kill him at this percent. Right, He's right. gotta be careful of how he plays neutral here, go for things like down tilt and F tilt. Yeah, and, you know, it actually goes to further your point, what they, what the two players just did right there, where Zenyu ran up and shield, and K9 just kinda stuck in shield, because he was so, ooh, very good back air. Netting Zenyu the first time, but really quickly just wanna say, like, cause you actually brought up a very good point, and which was that, like, at this point in their meta, like, once they're, once, for example, K9 is at kill percent, he will hold shield so much more now, especially because he doesn't want to get caught jumping around. Up smash will just destroy him, you know, so really yeah. kind of stuffs a lot of his movie baits. I remember a post from Zenyu a while ago um, on the SoCal Facebook page. This was a while back. He made a post saying, um, I see a lot of people having trouble with Mario. The best way to stay alive against him is you have to just sit center stage and hold shield. His grab can't kill you from Sarah's stage to pretty high percent, actually. Mm -hmm. He can't really up smash you. If you DI correctly off of his down throw, he can't follow up with it, really, so... Right. Yeah, and you know, I like the option of K9 just to play neutral, hold Sarah's stage here. That's what we see. He's really starting to run away with it now. Yeah, he really is, and that bouncing fish uh, connected with the air dodge, too, that was really, uh, came in really well for K9, allowing him to continue to keep Zenyu off stage. Like you brought up earlier, that's one of K9's strong points. I want to point out, K9's actually been pivot grabbing a lot against Zenyu here. Uh, Mario, kind of a slow character that has to jump in on you, but when he does that, you're able to jump or run away and just catch his landing with that pivot grab and get so much off of it. Yeah, aka right there, he got off of a, gr off of a grab. Uh, Zen, you panic air dodge and you got the bouncing fist with the stock right there, so. Uh, just goes to show exactly what you were talking about yeah. earlier. And these players are two just great instances of if you want to study how to play neutral, you watch these two players and you watch, man, Look at all the little intricacies that go into this set. Like, yeah. all the little things where you have to question, huh, why did he go for that option over, you know, the generic Mario? Like, why did he jump back in there instead of grabbing him or something like that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, re it really makes you wonder, but in, in my mind, the way I rationalize it is that they've, these two players have played so much that like, they, they, they kind of want to go for these anti-meta options that the other person just hasn't seen, so you always have the advantage of having the surprise. Because they've played each other a lot, you know, so in, in that sense, at least within this matchup, I feel I just feel like they, they want to keep it fresh, you know. Yeah, and Zenyu showing that last game did not phase him, you know. We saw K9 kind of run away with it at the end. Mm -hmm. Taking the last stock with, like, 20% or something like that. And it seems like Zenyu kind of says, all right, you got your lead, this is going to be my time to shine, you know, I'm going to show off what I can do, you know, the famous Zenyu combos. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, those, and you know, he really goes in with those, especially on, like, top players, too, like, he, he, like, he spares nobody, there is, oh, good up smash. From, yeah, dude, from a lot of players, like, standpoints, like, can't, uh, Zenyu just likes to keep it, like, if you're the same, you're just a player, I'm trying to mess up right now. And when he gets those combos, when he gets that grab, it's like, it really showcases it. He will hurt you no matter who yeah. you are. <laughs> Right now, uh, okay, K9 kind of makes some kind of rebuttal right there. Yeah, a bit overzealous with the up smash, Absolutely, though. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, I like that Tomahawk gets the grab. Uh, Zenyu holding on to stock. I like the frame trap there from K9. He goes for the immediate bouncing fish. Zenyu air dodges past it, but he is able to at least get a, find a back here and keep the pressure on Zenyu. Mm -hmm. But 66% to answer right back for it. Yeah, and Zenyu has got this lead, and he's you know already got one grab and went to 72%. So this is really gonna if if if, if K9 you know doesn't stop him from getting one more grab, that could be dead. Like that could be like he'll get a, a, a follow up into a fair air dodge reader, anything. And K9's looking really hard. He's getting grabs, but he's not converting them into anything meaningful. So you know that's why Zenyu right now is sitting at 151%. I mean, I like the little kind of cool mix up the wall jump cape, but like. I feel like there were better options in the cape, because the cape didn't have a shield yeah. stun to like, protect him. I feel like them. when you do that, if the opponent's ready for it, it just puts you in a worse position. You're above the ledge where they can hit you, mm -hmm. and you're in that lag. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely sure he was just banking on the fact that it was so weird, Kanan wouldn't be ready for it. Okay, and Kanan trying to make it back to stage, gets neared out of his down air uh, by Zenyu, I like that. Because he was trying to go for some crazy aggressive down air, I saw the, the first couple startup frames and yeah, he just got clipped with the nair. He's Zenyu's lived so long, and the rage with the down air with the <laughs> rage air. kills him out. Hundred. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the that's the consequence of not killing somebody early enough. Because yeah, granted, was, he killed him maybe twenty percent ago. He would have that down air wouldn't have killed. No. So. No, and that's the thing I was gonna say is, um, K9 really can't like upside him. Like can't find this kill. He's just gotta. You know, take it slowly, one hit mm -hmm. at a time. The thing about Sheik, 
is like, yes, I can't kill you, but I have so much safe damage I can put on you that it really doesn't matter. Like, mm -hmm. I'll get the kill eventually. You might be at 250%, and I'm just going to fail you from the <laughs> cross stage. But, <laughs> yeah. You know what? If it works, it works. I, whenever so I always tell people, this is my go-to thing. Whenever someone asks, man, I don't want to play slowly. You know, I want to go for the flashy kills. I don't want to time anyone out. I, you have to ask yourself, would you rather win in six minutes, or would you rather lose in two? That's a very, very good question. Yeah, for all you watching at home, yeah, take like, that into consideration right now. And every time, like, I see someone talk, like, man, Captain Andrew is a good example where he's like, man, I don't want to play slowly. I just ask him, would you rather win in those two minutes, or do you want to, or do you want to win in two minutes, or win in six minutes, or do you want to lose in those two minutes as well? Mm -hmm. It is a very important question because even I myself find myself, you know, kind of succumbing to the same thought process right now. You know, I just want to do it real fast. I want to win. I want to do it flashy, and you know, I don't, I don't want it to go six minutes. But that's cost me a fair amount of games too. And right now, that just might be what's costing A9 here because Zenyu's got him off stage right now, looking for a big opportunity, but it's getting reversed. Yeah, I mean, Kane Kane has definitely shown before that he can keep up with Zenyu. He just has to get the lead. He just has to do it safely. Yeah, and those capes right there, those are kind of like really good opportunities for K9 to run under and up smash. Hopefully, you didn't hear what I'm saying, but like those, those <laughs> especially the first one, the first one, the first cape that uh, Zenyu did in the air right there, it was right above the the airspace for up smashing at the sweet spot, so it was really unsafe. And right now, Zenyu uh, just kind of fishing for a, a kill, a ledge trump, an up smash, Ooh. just anything really. That bouncing fish was so unsafe, that, but it was so unsafe that Zenyu wasn't ready to punish it, <laughs> so it kind of worked out. Ooh, and that up here will take it. And I just kind of want to go back to what you said, it, which is that, like, really, like, a lot of times, especially at this level of play, sometimes the options like that work the it's, first time. Like, it's <laughs> like they used to say about, um, if you want to beat Mewtwo King, you have to go for the option that beats whatever punishes your most optimal option. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you think, okay, my best option would be to up B to the ledge, so they're going to try and ledge trump and kill me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just up B a center stage, and mm -hmm. they're not going to be right foot because they're going to be on the ledge and right. the stage. Ooh, yeah, and the back throw will take it. Zenyu trying to keep it even. Uh, and just to go back on that one more time, I feel like, uh, just to remind everybody who heard that, it only works the first time. Oh, yeah, no, don't <laughs> it only works the first time. Do not, do not think because something unoptimal works once that they're never going to be ready for it. Because there's a reason it's not the optimal option. Yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> but it, it is still good uh, words of advice. And uh, right now, Zenyu is really just trying to give him these jabs, man. <laughs> I, I like seeing Mario play his jab. It's one of the, like, the least used moves I've seen from them. Um, unless they're trying to jab lock. Outside of that, really, I hardly see what he did. Yeah, ooh, great combo from... Then you're able to get the lead yet again. Kane, I like that Kanan's trying to camp on the Smashville platform here, but you know he got hit once, and that was just big damage for Zenyu. He's got to be careful now. Yeah, it, it really a lot of the top, uh, the you know the, the top level characters, the top tier characters of this game, they really kind of turn it into like, a, oh, don't get hit, or you're taking 80. percent So you know, right there, even though Kanan was doing what he, in essence, should have been doing, aka taking his time on the platform. You know, one straight hit, and Mario's just running a train on you, so... Oh, he's got, he's off stage now. Ooh. Ooh, this is really tense right now, because Zenyu really has got... Oh, he was expecting a Bouncing Fish, though. He was like, that's why he had gone so far back. Yeah. The only thing it would have covered was Bouncing Fish, so he was really expecting that. Uh, well, can I reach him with that up air, but now I will find it. Oh, that was scary. I liked the option from Zenyu there, because in that situation, a lot of players would have tried to grab it. Not gonna He's get living. it. Wow, the vanish doesn't do it. Uh, oh. Zenyu getting a back air to take it. 3-1. Very good to get. Very good to Zenyu. That back air was clutch.